Hey, this is Brendan Fong doing my first ever gameplay video for CoinOp TV. Uh, we're playing NBA 2K12, uh, the uh, NBA Legends mode, I believe it's called. And um, yeah, Rob actually asked me, I played 2K11 a lot, and he asked me to come on over and try out 2K12. Of course, we're going to play in the 70s with good old Will Chamberlain there. I don't, really don't know how the people, uh, what players played in the 70s. It was like 40 years ago. And I know there's no three-point line, so uh, we'll we'll see how this uh, how this plays out. I'm gonna go ahead and keep it down whenever we've got some commentators going. That way you can hear uh, all the lovely commentary about Will Chamberlain and whatnot. So uh, here we go. Welcome everyone to sunny Los Angeles, California, back in the early 70s as the NBA on 2K Sports relives this classic matchup between two championship teams. The balanced and savvy defensive-minded New York Knicks with Walt Clyde Frazier and the great Jerry Lucas. They'll face off against the Los Angeles Lakers and their devastating superstar tandem of Wilt Chamberlain and Jerry West. And this game is full of interesting matchups, but I'll be locked in with isolated camera on the battle inside between the Herculean Big Dipper, Wilt Chamberlain, versus Ohio's own, the remarkably talented rebounder and shooter, Jerry Lucas. Should be fun to watch, and of course, the Knicks also have Willis Reed off the bench, another dominant big man in his own right. Yeah, a deep New York team. We'll see if that plays a role. And then, of course, you have the matchup between Walt Frazier and Jerry West, the primary playmakers for their teams, and both outstanding defenders. Two greats going head to head. All right, yeah, good start for the Lakers. It's one of those games that both teams would have had circled on the calendar. They need no pep speeches to get up for this one. And now let's go over the starting lineups. For the Lakers, the high scoring backcourt of Jerry West and Gail Goodrich. Jim McMillan and Ellis are the forwards. And the big man in the middle, Will Chamberlain. And on the other side for the New York Knicks, going up against Chamberlain inside will be the 6'9", Jerry Lucas. Bill Bradley and Dave DeBush are the forwards. And in the backcourt, Dick Barnett and Walt Clyde Frazier. Here's Bradley. Jerry West making his last shot. Good! For a small forward, Bill Bradley, really an extremely skilled ball handler. He was a high school legend. And he worked so hard on his game, and it sure paid off for him. He became a, a real star for the Knicks. Chamberlain. And the shot counts. He's fouled, and it's a chance for With the shooting foul. Now, the hardest part about playing 70s basketball is NBA 2K has always been about releasing the ball at the top of their uh, their shot animation. So some of these shot animations for 70s are going to be really hard to time out, like like this one. Watch watch Wilt. So there was just no way to judge that. And you know, going back to. Gail Goodrich in, in college, Steve. I mean, he finished as UCLA's all-time leading scorer and was just a terrific offensive player. Here's West. Iron short, but gets the kind goal and goes in. West has got his second button. West against Frazier. Pass to Barnett. Lucas with it. Six on the shot clock. Oh, that's blocked. But they'll get another chance. And oh, and it goes over. in. Not get off a shot before second violation. Monroe's check in for New York. Now we're also playing on uh, pro mode because I know a lot of people. There were some comments that had mentioned that Rob was playing rookie, so made sure we set it on pro. And here we go. West. West got the nickname Zeke from Cabin Creek, in part because of his West Virginian accent. And being called the logo is probably a little bit more endearing. Four or five to start the game. That's their first miss. Monroe dishes to Frazier. Knocked away. Baylor with the steal. So now that's twice we've seen the offense collapse. That's back-to-back -back empty trips because of turnover. Yeah, and that's going to be a problem because now all of a sudden you start turning the ball over, you lose all offensive rhythm and flow. Bradley kicks to Monroe.
dishes it to Lucas. And so what? Hits it off the backboard. Uh, he's a pleasure to watch on the offensive end. I know I wouldn't want to guard him. Here's West. Bradley against McMillan. Chamberlain against Lucas. Chamberlain, no luck. So close. Jerry Lucas, his legend is really enhanced by his intelligence. Very successful businessman. He wrote books on improving memory. His interests extended way beyond the basketball court. Bradley passes to DeBush. A rebound by the Lakers. Boy, surprised to see that one stay out. Me too, Steve. I mean, those are ones that usually go down for sure. They get a bet. And it's Chamberlain finishing it off. It's like Chamberlain dunk for for you right there. And the Knicks decide to take their first time out here. And I really wish I could have said that I dunked that as as Walt, Wilt, but uh, that was a computer. And the Lakers with some changes. Ellis is checked in for Baylor. Robinson is subbed in for West. And then for New York, Reed comes in for Lucas, and it's Barnett in for Frazier. Here's Monroe looking for his first bucket of the game. And at times for Lucas, with all his outside pursuits, it seemed Clark, his focus on basketball, wavered a bit. But you know what? He was successful at every level. My dad told me about his stellar high school career because he went to high school about the same time as my dad did in Ohio. He was the first American to win titles in high school, college, the NBA, and the Olympics. That is special. So six point lead's actually pretty good given there's no three pointers in this in franchise history in this game. Home, the organization's only two titles in both 1970 and 73. Good, pretty good, pretty good chance here. Hold them at bay. Good on the second free throw. We were talking about the Knicks team. That's what they were, right? A, a team. No question about it, guys. I mean. A group remembered for their unselfishness, the intelligence with which they played. I mean, a very smart team, cohesive. Everybody understood and accepted their roles. They had great talent now. I mean, they had like seven Hall of Famers. But the way they blended with one another so seamlessly, that's what made them special and well-remembered. How about that, fellas? That was a small on big battle on the board, and the little fella came out with it. Knocked loose. Shot high post. High shot by McMillan. Right from the get go, they've been shooting the ball extremely well. So I think it's a matter of just continuing to knock down shots like that. Um, they'll get the W here, no question about it. Now here's Brent. And here's Reed. Still looking to get on the scoreboard. Lock it four. Already four turnovers, and we're not even halfway through the first quarter yet. Yeah, very, very. Oh, beautiful layup on the breakaway. Here's Monroe. One second left, and the jumper is on the mark. And they're scoring pretty well as we conclude the first quarter. Lakers on top, up seven. Well, the thing they tried to establish right away was the presence down low. You look at the points in the paint. I think that's been the difference. Yeah, and I like the fact, Steve, that they're not settling for the outside shots. I mean, go in there and get what you want. Keep attacking the rim. Don't go away. Back in just a moment. All right, first so seven-point lead in Madden at the end of the first quarter. For my first playthrough video. Second quarter beginning in just a moment. Now, if you like what you're watching, please go ahead and like this video or subscribe to uh, CoinOp TV's channel. Unbelievable the types of numbers and records that he set. I mean, you could just go on and on. You could fill up a whole book with his record. <laughs> sure could. You got the hundred point game. How about the season? He averaged better than 50 points per game. He led the league in rebounding for 11 of his 14 seasons. And his imprint on this game will live on forever. We've got Chamberlain. Robinson is out there with West. 
Then it's Bailey. And it's Ellis at the power forward. That's the group for the Lakers to start the second quarter. And of course, it being 1970s basketball, you get your, where he was on the floor. your jump ball at the beginning of every quarter, which is kind of fun. Here's West. Left side, West. Gets himself open and drills it. West has got the first basket of the second quarter for the Lakers. West against Frazier. Lucas dishes to Frazier. Help the bucket. Well, you see the great passes. And that was a trademark Jerry for this Lucas. Knicks offense. Constant motion. Kind of an unspoken connection between the players. They really worked well as a unit. Well, the stories about Wilt Chamberlain are many. I mean, his strength, it was like Paul Bunyan. If a teammate fell to the floor, he'd pick him up and set him on his feet like he was picking up a toddler. But we're talking about a guy who could weigh well over 200 pounds. That's pretty amazing stuff. Mark, like you were saying for Chamberlain, you know, he just needed to be strong. Whether if nothing else, the pounding he took. And Steve, he took a pounding. He did. I mean, he was kind of the original Shaq. I mean, you know, the, the way he dominated games with his physical play and then the, the poor free throw shooting as well. Uh, so team's defensive game plan was basically just foul him uh, and send him to the free throw line. But uh, he was phenomenal at both ends of the floor. He's perfect from the line this time. Jerry Lucas, a 6'9 center out of Middletown, Ohio, a basketball hotbed at the time. He was the high school superstar in Ohio before Clark Kellogg and then before LeBron James. <laughs> <laughs> now, here is Robinson. That's no good. Couldn't get his first shot to go. Now, here's Frazier. Off the mark. And Lucas in high school, he draw crowds of over 10,000 people. Just hugely popular. Well, and he led his high school to two state championships in Ohio, two undefeated seasons. And some still consider him the greatest high school player of all time. And with Will Chamberlain, I, I think his story and his legacy will forever be intertwined with that of Bill Russell. And, of course, that's a problem for Chamberlain because Russell won 11 championships to just two for Wilt. Yeah, you know, and I think it's a bit unfair on some levels. I mean, Chamberlain was regarded as the incredible individual talent with four MVPs to his credit, 13 All-Star appearances in 14 seasons. But Russell was the big winner with 11 titles. And uh, I don't know if you necessarily can categorize Chamberlain as not being a winner. Russell had more titles, but Chamberlain made his mark, too. You know, you look at Wilt Chamberlain on this Lakers team, and I'm reminded how many great centers have worn that jersey. I mean, you, you look at the, the Laker history, and you think of Wilt Chamberlain, you think of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Shaq, and even Pau Gasol. So the Lakers have made a habit of really securing talent, especially on the front line. Walt Clyde Frazier out of Southern Illinois. His small school background contrasted his big city image in New York. Her coach fancy cars. He was not only smooth on the court, but off the court as well. A style and swag all his own. All right, so holding on to a six-point lead three minutes ago to the half. And Clyde Frazier Make that five-point so lead. Smooth, they said, and I find this interesting, he barely sweated when he played. Now, cool, calm, under control. That was Frazier. Again, without three-pointers, it makes it rather difficult to catch up, so. performance in game seven of the 1970 finals. It's all about getting those turnovers. Six points and 19 assists. Just legendary stuff for Clyde. You know, Willis Reed may get all the attention for his appearance in Game 7 of the 1970 Finals, but that game was all Walt Frazier. 36 points, 19 dimes, 5 steals. Remarkable. If it wasn't for Clyde, they don't beat the Lakers. Here is Frazier. Jerry West making his last Oh, shot. almost Frazier stripped. From the top of the key. And again, it's the Knicks missing. Lakers leading by six. Guarded by Jackson. Ring shot on the way. West with the moves to the hole. West has got six points in the quarter. You get a chance to see that lightning quick release from West. Jackson against Baylor from about 19 feet. Bradley can't get it to go. 
Ties a chance to add to their lead. And if they get it to double digits, Kevin, they might not get caught. McMillan kicks it to West. Over Lucas. A second chance effort. And the lead. Triple coverage. Well done. Smith's got his first points of the game. Well, you just see them taking it strong into the paint over and over again. Yeah, that really seems to be the strategy, partner. I mean, pound it inside. Time call here. The Knicks decide to talk it over. And I think what really stands out about Clyde Frazier was his size for a point guard at 6'4". Combined with his quickness, that really made him special. And the Lakers with some changes. Chamberlain's checked in for Smith. Ellis comes in for Baylor. And it's Goodrich in for Robinson. And then for New York, Reed is checked in for Jackson. The busher comes in for Barnett. And Monroe subbed in for Frazier. Here is Lucas. Kicks to Reed. With the lead pass, gets off his foot. And the ref's whistling a kickball. And talking about Frazier's size and quickness, that's part of what made him such a great defender. Yeah, and don't forget about the great hands, too, guys. I mean, he had tremendous hands, strong and quick. He'd lay off you and then dive in for steals at just the right time. Defense was definitely his calling card, his signature statement. Now, here is Monroe. Just five on the clock. West picks him up, oh. rolls up on the wing, and that is good. They call him Black Magic. Some hocus pocus on that move for you. Lakers leading by eight. Jim McMillan, they called him Jimmy Mack. He's a 6'5 forward out of Columbia and then won a title with the Lakers in just his second season in the NBA. Three kicks to Bradley. Lucas fires it up. Jerry West grabs the board. All right, Mr. NBA logo, Jerry West. Jimmy Mack, they called him. He came up big for him, averaging 19 points a game in the playoffs, filling in for Elgin Baylor and putting those fresh legs of his to good use. Look at Maintain this the double-point lead, double-digit lead. Well, defensively, they're doing a nice job of keeping them out of the paint, but you got to give them credit. They're knocking down shots. Now, here is Monroe. Backing down is DeBush. Now Monroe. Over West. Monroe, no good. The Lakers on offense. It's a 10-point game. Just one second between the shot clock and game clock. McMillan kicks to Chamberlain. We get Wilt in there. Over Reed. The Knicks pull it in. And here they come. Pushes up. Monroe floating to the rim for the easy two. Gets it off. West with the three. Oh. Trying to get that one. Well, not with the three, of course. The the <laughs> From downtown ball. without the three. Lakers lead by eight. Eight point lead isn't bad, though, at the half. 54% field goal percentage. Four assists. Of course, it's, that's 1970s basketball for you. And the third quarter about ready to get underway. Now, if you like this video, be sure to like it right below, or if you feel like commenting, please do. If you haven't subscribed to CoinOp TV yet, please do that. Literally, you look back in 1964, the league widely keyed from 12 feet to 16 feet that we see today, and that was largely attributed to Wilt and his dominance in the paint area. Well, and you talk about the rule changes uh, due to Wilt, Clark. It was the same way with college basketball outlawing dunks for a time because of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And some of these big guys were just larger than life, and almost like league officials didn't even know what to do about them, so they had to change the rule. Setting the floor for the Knicks. DeBusher is out there with Lucas. Then there's Frazier. Then it's Barnett. And it's Bradley in at the three spot. 
on the wing and good on the basket. Book it. West has got 12. Well, they've done a lot of their damage from mid-range here, guys. I mean, knocking down those shots with regularity. Yeah, how about eight oh, of horrible foul on Jerry West there. Off that mid-range area jump shot. So, shows you, you don't have to be at the rim to score. And, you know, you think about Wilt Chamberlain, guys. All the scoring titles, the incredible rebounding numbers. It seems amazing that he only won two championships. Well, you know what, guys? With winning championships is more about teams than individual brilliance. Um, one incredible player can't always make it happen in terms of championship. But this talented Lakers team, one of those with which he broke through and won the title. All right, seven point lead. And so he makes both. From Six the point lead. And Wilt Chamberlain had his share of nicknames over the years. Wilt the Stilt being one of them. How about uh, Goliath? He really didn't like that one very much. Uh, his favorite was actually the Big Dipper. Chamberlain off target with the jump hook. Knicks trail by six. And fouled hard that time. He'll get to the line and shoot two. Gail Goodrich picks one up. You look at what Frazier has done so far. He has 12 points, and he's produced six points from the free throw line. That's nice work. No, he's helping their cause, finding some easy points through uh, penetration and attacking the defense. One of the big differences you'll notice is between uh, NBA 2K11 and 212. In 2K12, the, uh, the shooting bars are round now, as opposed to little cellular bar the 2k11 had dipping his head when he went through doorways for your information doorways typically are only about six eight i've got to duck through some of them and that's how he got the name big dipper dipping beneath door frame well in 1960 the lakers moved from minneapolis's land it comes a little cellular bar is talking about the little yellow bar it's a circle now as opposed to uh a little slanted line just got four points this quarter here is Frazier. 14 points for him. Back to the busher. And so he draws the foul on the shot. A trip to the line to shoot two. That one on Baylor. And for the Lakers, after five times in the early 50s, they had a lesson in heartbreak during the 60s. Made the finals six times, losing each time. Boston Celtics. Boy, that is heartbreaking indeed, guys. They came out second best more than they would have liked, no doubt. But the team we see here eventually managed to break through and win a title. Nick's mounting a small comeback. And he makes both free throws. And Walt Clyde Frazier, as he was known, one of the seminal players in Knicks history, led that franchise to a championship. And of course, known not only for his work on the court, but for being a fashion icon in the 70s as well. Well, I think he was fashionable, he had flair, and he was fundamentally flawless. So, a seven-time All-Star, a seven-time All-Defense First Team, and he led the Knicks to both of the franchises two titles. He goes up. West gets the bucket. West has got 16 points. Now they've got to offer more resistance inside. Just too many easy buckets in the paint. Yeah, Stephen, that's the top priority for any defense. you got to protect the paint. New York calls timeout. Well, in 1971-72, Jerry Lucas led the Knicks in rebounding and field goal percentage. And he was second only to Frazier in scoring and assists. Such a vital part of that Knicks team. All right. Six-point lead. 2.51 to go. Especially without three-pointers, it's hard to mount a comeback. So it's all about defense. Here is Frazier. 14 points for him. An alley-oop in the 70s. Is home off the alley -oop. Remarkable. Well, his eyes got wide as he went up for that one. And he timed his leap perfectly to meet the pass at the top of its arc. 
and you know, you talk about Jerry Lucas. He's a guy that I'm very familiar with having played at Ohio State and being part of that Buckeye basketball family. You know, he outscored Will Chamberlain in the 72 finals. I mean, 6'9 going up against the 7'1 Giant. That's impressive. Now the pass to Barnett. Lucas backs down. Rebounded by the Lakers. I like the work there, contesting that shot that looked like it was going to be easy, but they forced the miss. You know what? He got it in close, but couldn't finish in traffic. Bill Bradley was a Rhodes Scholar at Princeton, also the College Player of the Year in 1965, and he spent his entire 10-year career with the Knicks. That's good. You can't pass up that kind of look. Here's West. 16 points for him. Here's a quick shot. Knicks with the rebound. Frazier's got three rebounds so far in the game. And Bill Bradley, you know, was an all-star back in 73, Steve, just to kind of pick up on what you were talking about. He was a gold medalist in 64. And, of course, outside of basketball, a three-term senator for New Jersey. Lucas backs down. Here's oh, to push. I missed the cut on that one. Pass there. Jerry Lucas. Lakers leading by four. Here's West. Lucas with the rebound. And you saw Clyde Frazier there defensively. One of the all-time greats at the guard spot because of his size, quickness, and tenacity at the defensive end. He could guard almost any position on the perimeter. Here's Chamberlain. Lucas with the rebound. Lucas has got seven rebounds in the game. Without a doubt, former Buckeye Jerry Lucas was one of the most versatile players of his era. He could play center or forward. He could rebound. He had a great outside shot. There were a lot of things that he did well. All right, we're going to slow down the game a bit here. Barnett against West. It's out of the key. And the Lakers with another miss. Knicks trail by four. Smart call here. They'll play for one shot. That's right. Try to get the last shot of the quarter here, Steve. Takes it up. A nice shot by Frazier. Frazier. Frazier's got eight here in the quarter. That's how you exploit that defense. Take the ball right to the basket. Go for a nice mid-range shot here at the buzzer. Last right side over Frazier. And again, the Lakers no good. And the game still closely contested as we end the third quarter. Not a great way to end the quarter, but two-point lead. Well, we know he can score, so it's not really a huge shock to see him put up these kind of big numbers. That we give you a nice little cliffhanger down to the wire. On this kind of play into the four. More from Los Angeles after this. This will be a down to the wire game. Make it a little more interesting for you guys watching. I'd love to say that was. This is, is on purpose. We'll just say it is. New York Knicks, they're a founding member of the NBA back when it was called the Basketball Association of America in 1946. Ellis is out there with Erickson. Then there's Chamberlain. Then it's Robinson. And it's Goodrich in the shooting guard position. That's who's in the game for the Lakers. And the Lakers have possession. Oh, and speaking of the Knicks' origins, they and the Celtics, the only founding teams that are still in their original cities. And the team name, the Knickerbockers, was actually a name used for the descendants of the first Dutch settlers of New York. A lot of history and tradition for this team. Chamberlain backing down. Goes straight up. Gets There's the, the will we know. With the D all over him. And the Lakers lead by two. Frazier kicks to DeBush. Reed back and down. Jumps up, and the layup falls. It's all knotted up. Now, no surprise to see Willis Reed come through in the clutch. Uh, so consistent, one of those players who always seemed to be at his best when the game called for it. Now here's Goodrich. Goodrich got him with the pump fake. Solid move right there. 
And you know, one of the things that made Dale Goodrich so good was he was quick, he was strong, he was fast, and being left-handed, he seemed to catch defenders off guard. Defenders generally aren't as accustomed to guarding lefties, and it changes the angle you have to take with your footwork. Time call here. The Knicks decide to talk it over. That was a good time to call the timeout to try to settle everybody down and get back into their offensive rhythm. They've been coughing up the rock an awful lot. Looking at who's out there now for the Lakers. Johnson, he's checked in for Chamberlain, and McMillan subbed in for Ellis. The Knicks also changing it up. Lucas comes in for Barnett, and Monroe subbed in for Frazier. Now, here is Monroe. Monroe was a playground legend in Philadelphia, and he was known for his fluid style and fancy dribbling, and eventually became such a key player for those Knicks teams. Yeah, and you know, guys, he was um, dubbed many nicknames, but the one that, that I kind of like is Thomas Edison for all the dribble moves that, that he invented. He was absolutely a magician when the ball was in his hand. Here's Reed. Ball's knocked loose. It's a surprise to see him struggling to take care of the ball, guys, after turning it over only once in the first half. New York trailing. Well, he was being overly optimistic there, thinking you could make that pass. McMillan. Oh. Rebounded by New York. Monroe's got three rebounds now in this one. The 10 footer. Rebounded by the Lakers. Johnson down low. Reed covering. He passes it to Erickson. Shoots over Monroe. And the basket by Erickson. And the Lakers lead by four. He kicks it to Lucas. Oh, the one-hand jam. Oh, I like that finish. Perfect for that possession. Yep, a simple one-hand jam. That's the way to do it, guys. Here's Goodrich. Feeds it to Johnson. Reed covering. And so he earns a trip to the line. Officials saw the contact, and he'll shoot two. Heads up play, preventing the easy lay-in. Yeah, I like that. I mean, he saw it was a free layup, didn't want to give that up, so he fouled him the fourth free throw. All right, here we go. Again, it's always the timing on these are the hardest things because you don't know what his animation is ahead of time. And that one falls for Johnson. So it's both teams making substitutions here. Now the percentage sign that you saw up there is new to 2K12 as far as I know. And it replaces the, uh, the bar that they used to have, I believe. He hits one, then misses the second attempt from the free throw line. And they're running. Here's Frazier, and in he goes for the easy two. Frazier's got ten points in just the second half. The Lakers in the lead. Top of the key. And the rebound goes to the Knicks. Monroe's got four rebounds in this game. Picked up by Brown. Shoots from 12. There's the block. The Lakers on offense. They lead by one. McMillan. It's blocked. Here comes Frazier. Picked up by Brown. That puts them in the lead. Frazier's got four this quarter. That's Clyde Frazier for you, fellas. I mean, he has the combination all basketball players would love to have. The perfect blend of size and quickness. Timeout call the Lakers. All right, so we've lost our lead. We're down by one, but, of course, I'm giving you the nail-biter I told you I was going to promise you. All teams will make substitutions. And West and Wilt are finally back in the game, so we're about to see some magic here. Except I was too busy talking, and I just got the five-second rule. Can lead to brain neutral plays like that, guys. One 
38 left in the fourth quarter. Here's Barnett. Frazier outside. Hangs. Rebounded by Goodrich. Goodrich has got three rebounds so far in the game. McMillan kicks it to West. Shoots over Bradley. Can't get it to go. And New York takes it the other way. A 10-footer. Chamberlain with the block. West against Bradley. A 10-footer. Huge shot by Jerry West. Huge bucket. They don't get much bigger than that, Steve. Less than one minute left. Tipped. Here's Frazier. Connects. He's just so clutch. Here's a guy you want on your side with the game on the line, Kevin. Here's West. And he banks in the lane. How about that? Going up strong. I mean, he doesn't care how much height he's given up. It's attitude with him. New York calls timeout. They're down by one. 36 seconds left to play here in the fourth. Guys, what do you think? They do have enough time here. They shoot quickly to get the two for one. Let's see if they try that. Yeah, and you know, and I think the key thing, probably what Coach wants to see is a good shot. It's important to convert right here. Here's Barnett. Jerry West making his last shot. Goodrich against Barnett. Frazier against West. Unloads from nine. Shot by Frazier, no good. And they foul intentionally. They're going to have to do that now again and again. They're not in the penalty yet. Now they're just trying to stretch this game out. So good foul there. Stop the clock. Yeah, good solid foul because with the scoring time as it is, that's really their only option. Gets the first. That'll put him up by two. All right, and of course it comes down to the free throws I've been talking about all game. Jerry West is a little easier to predict. Perfect from the line, and it's a three-point ball game. Big free throws, Kevin. Now they'll need a three to just stay alive. New York calls timeout. They're trailing by three. Interesting commentary the there. They said they needed a three, but we all know you can't shoot threes in the 1970s. Nice little glitch right there. 15 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Money! And that shot brings them to within two. All right, here we go. Oh, he just does so many things well out there. A true pro, a professional display he's put on here. And, of course, I'm going to keep giving the ball to Jerry West since his animation is a little easier to score free throws. There we go. First one, and that'll put him up by two. Down to the wire, guys. I promise you a nail biter. Here we go. Gets them both, and it's a three point ball game. Goes up. Sinks it. And what a sensational bucket to bring them within one. All right, who am I going to toss it to? Here's West. And there's the intentional foul. No choice but to stop the clock here. Three point one seconds left. Sinks the first of three. That's the first perfect release I've gotten all game. This is like Teen Wolf. Oh. 
sinks number two, and that makes it a three-point lead. He came through. If they just get a stop, they'll walk away with the win. Oh, and he hits the from downtown the two-pointer. It would have been amazing if it were in the 80s. Well, thanks for joining us for this look back at the best of NBA history, including the great Wilt Chamber. For Clark Kellogg, Steve Kerr, and the whole crew, Kevin Harlan saying good night from Los Angeles. All right, guys, so that's my very first gameplay video for CoinOp TV. I'm Brendan Fong. You can find me at RTC Film on uh, Twitter. Um, there you go. I told you we were going to have a nail-biter, and there we did. One by one point would have been a tie if there were such things as uh, three-pointers. If you like this video, go ahead and like it. Click like right there. If you haven't subscribed to CoinOp TV, you absolutely should. And uh, check out all our other videos. We've got a couple NBA great videos from 2K12. If you haven't seen them, go ahead and check those out too. Thanks for watching.